Okay, around the 1st of April, I noticed in one of the 300 gallon vats over there a batch of frog eggs. We have resident bullfrogs in here, so I assume they were bullfrogs. I gathered up the eggs and put them in this vat. I put this piece of styrofoam in so when they started emerging as adults, they were, you know, frogs instead of tadpoles, they'd have someplace to go. When I walked up, there was one of them on top fed them. They're fairly vegetarian when they're tadpoles. They ate regular fish food. Not on the, you can see the hornwort they chewed on. They've been growing up and hopping out of the vat, which is good, but I need this vat for something else, so we're going to see what's left in here. There's a, that one's still a tadpole. Yeah, little baby cichlid and guppies. Mollies. That's okay. I'm trying to let them go. <laughs> the fish that are in here got in on plants that I fed to the uh, tadpoles. It looks like it might just be down to one. There were at least a couple dozen. That's another molly. This stuff is freshwater sponge that got in the system somehow. Seems happy. I've had it identified. I don't remember the exact species that Matt Hill in Idaho identified it for me. And it's harmless. It filters out. The system's really rich because basically it's a big ecosystem. It has a lot of plants. There's the paramecium, scuds, all kinds of microorganisms and the sponge filters those out. It doesn't filter out scuds, but it filters out paramecium and other microorganisms as food. What I'm going to do is siphon this vat down, see if there's anybody else in here, and we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, he's basically living off his tail right now, absorbing the tail. What we're probably going to do is move him to a 300 and let him emerge in there. Kate, you see the tadpole? He's almost a frog. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's that, a long tail. Yeah, it won't be long for long. He's going to absorb it. That, that's its food now that it's no longer eating like a tadpole. Okay, we're going to siphon this back down, see if there's anything else in it. We'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, I've partially siphoned this down and I saw something that's going to change my mind. By the way, that white ring back there is a uh, sponge where water flows, it likes water flow. This just changed my mind. This is a leukistic tadpole. So I'm going to not break down this vat. I'm going to put this guy back, turn the water back on, set it back up. I'm very, very interested in seeing what that tadpole looks like as an adult frog. The tadpole we looked at is the typical coloration. It's interesting that the leukistic one is less mature. Could be a lot of different reasons for that. One of which could be genetic. Okay, good frog keeping. Okay, this morning we're doing an update on our bullfrog tadpoles. What happened was that we have resident bullfrogs in the greenhouses. Nice big ones. They come out at night, so you only see them at night. Almost six months ago, they spawned in one of the 300-gallon vats, big clump of tiny black eggs. I moved some of the eggs to a 55-gallon vat, and about a month ago, the tadpoles started growing legs, absorbing their tail, and I had a, I'll show you in a little bit, a piece of styrofoam that they could hop up on and then hop out of the vat. And we see them around every once in a while. They seem to be diurnal, active during the day when they're little, but as they get a little bit bigger, they shift to being nocturnal like the adults. There's only one tadpole left, and we showed him in the video. It's a very, very light colored one, and I cleaned the bat, and he's the only one left. He's just starting to grow legs, and I'm putting him in an aquarium here if I can do it without hurting him. It's interesting that his hind legs and tail are darker than the body, but even the dark tail and uh, dark hind legs are a lot lighter than its siblings. 
for some reason it's way behind. All the others have been out for over a week now. Okay, what we're going to do is go down to his vat, put him back in, and since Susie walks slower than I do and she's filming, we're going to take a short break and we'll see you back at the vat. Oh wait, before we do that, catch the garden spider down there. That's a female garden spider. She's decided to build her nest there, kind of an awkward place because it's on a bucket. But we'll leave her alone and see if a male finds her so she can mate. The males are a lot smaller. Okay, we'll sit. you want to try walking down there? Okay, we're going to walk down. If, you, if the camera goes wild and you hear a scream, that's uh, Susie falling in a 300-gallon bat. I'm walking a lot slower than I normally do. Okay, here's the bullfrog bat. You can see this is a piece of styrofoam I put in there so they can, once they're little frogs, they hop up on that and they easily jump out. And now I'm going to release the tadpole. Let's move this out of the way. They'll be happy and grow up. And I'm going to, let, I'm going to watch for it. It'll start coming out on the styrofoam after it starts growing it front legs and it will absorb its tail and then eventually jump out. I hope it does well. I want to see what it looks like as an adult. Okay, good frog keeping. Okay, a, a bullfrog update. Back in April, early April, in this vat, which we're, Kate's been taking down, I found a, a big cluster of uh, bullfrog eggs. I transferred some of those, or as many as I could get, to a 55 gallon aquarium where they hatched. Some were still in here and in July when we processed this vat last, I saw some bullfrog tadpoles, including this guy. See if we get him to swim, okay. He's very pale. He's got a dark tail, but he's very pale. We had one other like this in the 55 gallon aquarium and it never underwent metamorphosis into an adult. All of its siblings did, all the normal siblings. And the same thing happened in this 300, all the normal siblings underwent metamorphosis and they've scattered out their frogs and they've scattered out into greenhouses, found homes. This one still hasn't. All the normal ones underwent metamorphosis around, certainly by September. The other light one died without undergoing metamorphosis. I'm going to set this guy aside in a 55 and see what happens to him. I think whatever mutation is that causes him to be light colored, light body colored, is also uh, preventing metamorphosis. He does have hind legs, and his sibling, light colored sibling, did the same thing. The hind legs and the tail are closer to normal color the body's way light. So we're going to give him a chance, see if the same thing happens. Now somebody, after posting an earlier video about the tadpoles, said that bullfrogs take a year and a half, two years or more to undergo metamorphosis. But we feed a high protein food. They have nice warm temperatures all year round. So for some reason, ours underwent metamorphosis in Oh, five or six months. And I think it's probably the high protein diet, lots of food and good water conditions led to early, them maturing early. Hey Mila. Okay. You can't eat the frog. Good frog keeping.